the gross anatomy of the lung including its clinical and applied aspects let us recap the parts of the lung apex base or inferior or diaphragmatic surface apart from this two surfaces costal surface medial surface bearing the hilum and further subdivided into anterior mediastinal part and posterior vertebral part three borders anterior sharp border posterior rounded border and the inferior border the relations of the borders of the lung the inferior border of the lung occupies the costodiaphragmatic recess and the anterior border occupies the costomediastinal recess of pleura the posterior border lies in the depression on either side of the vertebra called the paravertebral gutters it is related to the 7th cervical to the 10th thoracic spines the apex of the lung lies in the thoracic inlet and is related to the first rib its relations are very important and are better understood if we know the arrangement of structures in the inlet of thorax and the attachment and relations of the first rib the apex extends approximately 2.5 cm above the clavicle or 3 to 4 cm above the first costal cartilage it is anteriorly related to the subclavian vessels the subclavian vein the subclavian artery and the scalenous anterior muscle lying between them superiorly the apex is covered by the cervical pleura which is further strengthened by the overlying suprapleural membrane also called sibson's fascia this fascia is responsible for preventing the puffing up of the root of the neck during respiration laterally lies the scalenous medius muscle and the lower trunk of brachial plexus the apex of the lung posteriorly extends up to the neck of the first rib therefore the posterior relations of the apex are same as the anterior relations of the neck of first rib remembered with the mnemonic swan from medial to lateral sympathetic chain first posterior intercostal vein superior intercostal artery and the first thoracic nerve medially the structures vary on both the sides the right lung is medially related to two vessels right brachiocephalic vein and brachiocephalic trunk two nerves phrenic and vagus and one viscera that is trachea the left lung is medially related to again two vessels left brachiocephalic vein and left subclavian artery two viscera esophagus and thoracic duct and the one nerve that is left recurrent laryngeal nerve the apex of the lung is vulnerable to stab injuries to the neck which may lead to pneumothorax the tumors of the apex or the upper lobe of the lung may compress the adjoining structures passing through the thoracic inlet leading to thoracic inlet syndrome these tumors of the apex are also called pancos tumors they usually involve the adjoining structures especially the posterior relations leading to a group of signs and symptom symptoms together called the pancos syndrome they may erode the first or second ribs the involvement of the lower trunk of brachial plexus may cause pain along the medial border of upper limb or wasting of the small muscles of the hand sympathetic trunk may cause horner's syndrome the base of the lung is related to the diaphragmatic pleura and the diaphragm the base of the right lung is more concave due to the presence of the underlying right lobe of the liver the left lung is related to the left lobe of liver fundus of stomach and the spleen the costal surface is related to the thoracic wall from inner to outer costal pleura endothoracic fascia the ribs their costal cartilages and the intervening intercostal spaces 
the extent of the inferior border of the lung is important it extends up to the sixth rib in the mid clavicular line eighth rib in the mid axillary line and tenth rib in the scapular line this is two ribs above the level of the lower extent of pleura so the lower extent of lung is 6 8 10 and the lower extent of pleura is 8 10 and 12 the medial surface of the lung contains the hilum and the pulmonary ligament it is further subdivided into the anterior mediastinal part and the posterior vertebral part the relations of the vertebral part are same on both the sides that is first to 10th thoracic vertebra and their intervertebral discs the posterior intercostal vessels the greater and lesser splanchnic nerves the mediastinal surface bears numerous impressions on both the sides these are produced by the structures present in the mediastinum which differ on the right and the left side starting on the right side there is a large cardiac impression present just anterior inferior to the hilum this is produced by the right atrium and the auricle the right side of the heart is the venous end so just posterior inferior to the cardiac impression lies the impression of the inferior vena cava at the upper end of the cardiac impression is the impression of the superior vena cava in the lower part and the brachiocephalic vein in the upper part these vessels or veins are accompanied by the phrenic nerve and the pericardiophrenic vessels which descend anterior to the hilum of the right lung just anterior to the impression of the veins lies the impression of the thymus and ascending aorta above the hilum is the arch of the azygous vein this starts from the impression for the superior vena cava arches above the hilum of the right lung and descends behind the hilum just above the azygous vein is the impression for the trachea anteriorly and the esophagus posteriorly the esophagus then descends posterior to the hilum and the pulmonary ligament this esophagus is also accompanied by the vagus nerve which descends posterior to the hilum just behind it we may see a small impression of the azygous vein apex base anterior sharp border posterior rounded border mediastinal surface of the right lung the cardiac impression at its upper end impression of superior vena cava lower posterior end inferior vena cava above the hilum is the arch of the azygous vein the azygous vein arches above the hilum to drain into the superior vena cava impression of the first rib and the brachiocephalic vein close to the apex the impression of the trachea along with it the vagus nerve which descends posterior to the hilum the impression of the esophagus extends from the apex to the inferior border of the lung it descends posterior to the hilum of the right lung the mediastinal part of the medial surface of left lung in the antero inferior part it shows a deep concave cardiac impression this is mainly produced by the left ventricle and auricle and a small part of the right ventricle just superior to the cardiac impression anteriorly lie the thymus and pulmonary trunk also descending anterior to the hilum are the phrenic nerve accompanied by the pericardiophrenic vessels whereas the right lung was mainly related to the venous structures the left lung has arterial relations anterior to the hilum starts the aorta as the ascending aorta it then arches above the hilum of the left lung to form the arch of aorta and descends behind the hilum as the descending thoracic aorta between the impression of the descending thoracic aorta and the pulmonary ligament in the lower part a small impression 
of the esophagus may be seen. Two branches of the arch of aorta are seen in the upper part. Anteriorly, the left subclavian artery and behind it, the impression of the left common carotid artery. Behind these two arterial impressions lies the esophagus and thoracic duct. These viscera are accompanied by the vagus nerve which descends posterior to the hilum of the left lung. The apex, the base, sharp anterior border, posterior border, hilum of the left lung. Anterior inferior to the hilum, the deep concave cardiac impression. On the left side, anterior to the hilum ascending iota, above the hilum arch of iota and behind it the descending thoracic iota. Two branches from the arch of iota, subclavian artery and common carotid artery. Two nerves, phrenic nerve descends anterior to the hilum and the vagus nerve descends posterior to the hilum. Close to the apex, two viscera, the thoracic duct and the esophagus. Arterial blood supply is through the bronchial arteries which lie just behind the bronchus. On the left side, we have two bronchial arteries, upper and lower, both branches of the descending thoracic iota. On the right side, there is one bronchial artery, which is usually a branch of the third posterior intercostal artery, may sometimes arise from the upper left bronchial artery. These bronchial arteries supply the lung tissue and the conducting part of the bronchial tree that is up to the respiratory bronchioles. The distal part of the bronchial tree that is the respiratory part is mainly supplied by the pulmonary capillaries and the air present in the alveoli. The venous drainage is through the bronchial veins, two on each side. These bronchial veins on the right side drain into the azygous vein and the left bronchial veins drain into the left superior intercostal vein or the hemiazygous vein. Some of the deep bronchial veins may drain into the pulmonary veins. The lymphatics can be divided into superficial lymphatics which are mainly subplural and the deep lymphatics which run along the bronchi and the bro blood vessels. All the lymphatics mainly run towards the hilum of the lung and drain into the main lymph node of the lung that is the bronchopulmonary also called the hilar lymph node. Lymph from here is drained through the tracheobronchial lymph nodes, the pre and paratracheal lymph nodes to form the bronchomediastinal trunks. These drain into the right lymphatic duct or the thoracic duct. The thrombus from distant sites like the lower limbs may enter the pulmonary circulation and block the pulmonary capillaries. This may lead to acute respiratory distress syndrome and death. The inflammatory lung disease may sometimes cause thrombosis of the bronchial arteries which lie close to the bronchus and may rupture into the bronchus leading to massive vomiting of blood called hemoptysis. Bronchogenic Carcinoma Most common cancer seen in males and most commonly seen in case of smokers. This cancer may spread through the lymphatics to the hilar lymph nodes, the mediastinal lymph nodes and the supraclavicular lymph node, also called the sentinel node. The biopsy from the hilar or mediastinal lymph nodes can be taken with the help of a scope which is passed through the neck into the mediastinum, known as cervical mediastinoscopy. The spread of the lung cancer is commonly seen to the brain through both the arterial or the venous route. The arterial route is mainly through the pulmonary veins, entering to the left side of the heart, then travelling through the iota and its branches, that is the internal carotid and vertebral branches, into the brain. The venous spread is through the bronchial veins into the azygous veins which communicate with the vertebral venous plexus from where through the dural venous sinuses 
the cancer may spread into the brain. The nerve supply to the lungs is mainly autonomic and both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves form the anterior and posterior pulmonary plexus. The parasympathetic supply is through the vagus nerve. It is stimulatory to the bronchial muscles thus causing bronchoconstriction. It increases the secretion from the glands that is secretomotor. Most sensory fibers also travel through the parasympathetic nerve that is the vagus and these are responsible for the stretch and cuff reflex. Sympathetic supply is through the T2 to T5 spinal segments. These are inhibitory to the bronchial muscles thus cause bronchodilatation. They also supply the smooth muscle in the wall of the blood vessels that is sympathetic vasomotor fibers. In case of bronchial asthma which is characterized by spasm of the bronchial muscles leading to difficulty in breathing that is dyspnea and wheezing. It is mostly treated by giving sympathomimetic drugs. These drugs are inhibitory to the bronchial muscle thus cause bronchodilatation and relieve the bronchospasm of asthma. Thank you and happy learning.